Welcome to Pub Talk, the unofficial official craft beer podcast of Oklahoma, where we're all about the three B's, beer buddies, and bullshit. I'm Michael, and with me as always is a man whose sobriety will probably plummet once we all gather around to attend our first virtual beer summit, Jeremy. Hey, yo. On today's show, we're back again with another social distancing show, this time to catch up and talk about the upcoming Oklahoma Craft Beer Summit. If you like what you hear today, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button wherever you're listening right now. Show us some love on social media at Pop Pop Podcast. All right, let's get in the first round. What? You know, they brew 10,000 bottles of beer a day. I drink 45 off the assembly line, and I'm the asshole. What are you drinking tonight? What? It's not the middle of the day. Yeah, we've done a lot of these at night lately. Yeah, that last one was a doozy. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, so I'm drinking one of my uh, whale kit beers, which we'll talk more about here in a minute, uh, from the summit. Uh, it is from Elk Valley Brewing in Oklahoma City. Uh, it is, I guess it's a collaboration with the Butcher Barbecue Stand. It's barbecue smoked porter ale. So for those watching the video, here's the sexy can. Um, Sounds interesting. So it's 8.4% alcohol by volume. Uh, obviously, it's a smoke porter. Um, yeah, I grabbed this one for the show because it sounded interesting. And uh, yeah, uh, I got to say, and I'm going to take a drink before I finish this thought. <laughs> it's, uh, it's like drinking a barbecue meal. <laughs> uh, okay. Like throw that shit in a blender. Blend it all up real good because it's not, it's not real thick. Like, you know, like a blended meal would be, uh, but the flavor, it like it, it's got the smoke flavor that's in the name. Um, I get like a, almost like a barbecue sauce flavor, like a mesquite barbecue sauce flavor. Um, but it's, it's got a nice mouthfeel. It's somewhere between, you know, like too, too thick, like some stouts can be. And it's, it's not too thin either. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's fucking good. Hmm. Damn it. I want that one now. <laughs> yeah, I, I probably couldn't sit there and drink a six pack of these. Um, yeah. The ABV alone, but also it's just a lot of flavor, uh, a lot of rich, you know, barbecue flavor that would probably not do real well after a few, but, and for, for just drinking one of these, it's, it's fucking interesting and good. Uh, rating wise out of five rounds. Listeners, viewers, whatever, know how rare it is for, for either of us to give something that's not a stout uh, for. And this is not a stout. I mean, I know it's a porter, which is right there. But, man, I it's, it's interesting. It's different. It's well-made. It tastes good. Like four. Really? 404. Oh, awesome. So 4.04. That's, that's, that's high. Yeah. Yeah. Four, four Oh four. I think. Um, yeah. I'd, I'd pick it up again. So thank you. Craft beer summit. And I, that one I'd seen, I think on that on the list, but I'd, I don't think I've ever seen that beer from them before. I, I don't think I have, I drink a lot, so I wouldn't swear to that, but yeah. <clears throat> Uh, where's my bottle at? Yeah, what are you drinking? Here's the one I'm drinking. <laughs> so I'm drinking one out of uh, my Will Hunter kit as well. Only makes fucking sense for this episode. Yeah. Um, it was kit number three. Well, I guess we'll talk about that more in a minute. But this one's from Stone Cloud. Okay. It I is the same one that was in mine. Huh? I think that's the same one that was in my kit. Yeah, I was in a few of them. The purple druplet. I think is how you say that. Sure. Uh, it is a <laughs> that word is fooder, right? F o e d e r. It depends on how uh, whatever word you want to put there, you want to. <laughs> <laughs> it's that word, aged sour l with blackberries. Uh, it is. I want to say it was seven percent. Yeah, seven percent ABV. Okay. Um. One of the main reasons I, well, no, because it's on a couple of them, but it was one of the beers I was definitely wanting to try. I've never had this one before. 
Yeah. I'm from Stone Cloud, and I've been on kind of a sour kick lately. Really? It's fucking weird. Yeah, finally, I think I'm, I'm liking them. I'm huh. liking the fuck out of this one. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, I've had a, I've had quite a few over the past couple weeks. That's what I've done with my quarantine is developed a, a taste for sour beer. Um, yours was like a meal. This one tastes like a dessert. Uh, it legit. When I first took the first sip, I was like, it reminded me of blackberry cobbler. Oh, okay. Like straight fruit. Um, it's a shitload of fruit in there because it's just hanging around like the rim of the fucking bottle. I know the camera will pick that up, but a shitload of fruit. Um, it does definitely reminds me of some of those slushy beers just because just the potency, of the fruit inside of them. Um, it is sour, but not, not that sour, but it's fucking delicious. This is totally another one I would pick up again. Um, I don't know that I've, well, I don't know. I've probably tried sours from them before, but I don't know that I have. I don't know, but this one's awesome. Um, yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's really sweet. I, yeah, it's fucking delicious. Um, it's easily a four. This okay. fuck, this might be a four. Four, three, four. Okay. It's really good. Nice. A lot of the sours I've had recently, this is probably one of the better ones. Um, didn't know, I didn't know what I was expecting, but. It's awesome. Okay, we were just talking about missing Oklahoma City too, so it's cool to get some something from Oklahoma City. Yeah, yeah. My kid had quite a, and we'll talk about that more here in a second. Mine had quite a few from Oklahoma City. I was pretty stoked about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's fucking delicious. So, what's been going on? <laughs> Uh, well, you know, covered from the last episode, I see. Uh, yeah, barely. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we can talk about that first. I feel like I say this every time we do one of these Zoom episodes or Skype before we were doing Zoom, where it's, it's like, even though I'm barely leaving the house, like plenty still happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you haven't listened to the episode before this one with Amanda, uh, I don't know why you're listening out of order. Don't be weird. But, <laughs> Go back and listen to it if you haven't. If you, a lot of you have, because I've heard from a lot of you, <laughs> especially anyone who has my cell phone number. Um, uh, yeah, that was a good one. Um, thanks again to Amanda for being on. Uh, I thought it was funny. I had several people message me and ask what kind of Lego that dude shoved in his pee hole. Yes. <laughs> and I... I mean, I had assumed, and I didn't really put any thought into it, but when, I, when I'm a visual thinker and when I pictured it in my mind's eye, I assumed it was just a regular Lego brick. Yeah, which same. Which fucking wow. Yeah, fucking same. Um, Amanda sent a quick video clip that we put on our Instagram stories last week explaining exactly what it was, which I'll cut in here. So I guess some of you were asking what kind of Lego it was in the video I was sent, and it wasn't something like square or with corners. It was actually a mini fig head, like this. So I guess the guy was just trying to give himself a little head. But yeah, that's not as painful, I guess, but it's probably weirder. (laughs) I would say I'm gonna need them to step their game up if they're gonna be like that, but just don't be like that. Yeah. Hey, I'm issuing a challenge right now. If that dude happens oh, to hear this, God damn. one of those long bricks. <laughs> mm, my eyeballs hurt right now. Like every uh, just and Matt. Nope. Yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> there's your answer if you were curious, and uh, you know if you were one of the unfortunate ones, I guess that caught our Instagram live antics with Amanda after we recorded that episode a week and a half or so ago as we're recording this. Don't know, none of the three of us know what the fuck was said or done on that, so probably should just say sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It was just funny watching back the video. It was like, I remember, like, the whole interview went, you know, fairly good, quick, and after we did the chug, we don't look fucked up. No, No real beer spilled, and then you motherfucker when it came back and I'm singing 
that fucking song and there's just beer all over my shirt and i'm just like oh yeah <laughs> that explains a lot yeah i the little bits of memory i have i i think we chugged another one with her after we wrapped the show and we were just shooting the shit for a while i think we chugged another beer i definitely remember I hope so it was all over my shirt not that bad yeah i, I definitely remember her um during the portion of the live Instagram that I did, challenging me to take a shot. I don't do shots, <laughs> but I did. Um, <laughs> and that's that's pretty much the extent of it. So um, anyway, good times. We'll have her back on again sometime, but uh, oh yeah, maybe we, I don't know, need a sponsor for that episode or something. No, you've had enough. <laughs> don't, don't go live you're gonna say weird things right oh man I, I asked a few people that i know personally that i know tend to view our stories if they happen to watch any of that mm -hmm. everybody i asked said a variation of oh i saw you were live but i didn't actually watch anything uh how was it i don't fucking know i was hoping you could tell me <laughs> Like, I kind of don't want to know, but yeah, I probably should in case I said anything fucked up. Hey, it's been a little it's bit since then. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. Oh, man. I guess something else that's come out in the last day or two um, that I'll throw out there. And I don't know if you've seen this, but um, McNelly's announced they're putting in a beer garden next to their downtown location, putting in a couple of big shade trees. They did that, I think it was yesterday. I don't know. Yeah. If they did together. Sometime this week. Um, so that'll be cool once we're all allowed to socialize again. Yeah, tree looks crazy right there. Especially the little area that's... Has there ever been anything right there? I, I couldn't really tell from the pictures exactly. I remember just being kind of an empty place he had walked by, but it, the, that big tree looks cool there now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I gathered it was right next... Like like you said, kind of that alley that was right there. Yeah. I've never remembered there being anything there. Yeah, yeah awesome. that's new. And then this, you know, you can go some places now uh, and and get a draft beer. Um, I know off the top of my head, Welltown, American Slurra, and Cabin Boys are all doing either patio service or um, limited tap room service. Emerson Nice is open back up for food, dine in. Um, and I think everybody else is kind of playing it by ear for the 15th, I believe it is, when the next phase, assuming the numbers don't spike majorly, um, to, to see what they're going to do, which is also when alcohol delivery will probably expire. Yeah, I guess um, deliveries will probably come to an end. Next week on the 15th, um, unless it gets extended, I don't feel like it will, but I don't have insider info on that or anything. It's just a, just a feeling. Um, it'd be nice if they just make that permanent. That'd be fucking awesome. But especially because I, I mean, for the time being, I'm, I don't know about you. I'm going to still, even though I may start going and doing some things, I'm going to pretty strictly limit. Oh yeah. I'm not. I've got fucking like asthma hardcore growing up, so that shit freaks me out. I ain't trying to catch a respiratory disease. Right. <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. So, yeah. Even though I'm not, I haven't had a fucking attack in I don't know how long. I, I don't fuck with that shit. So right. I put my fucking mask on and go out and get some stuff, but I'm, I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm not going anywhere. Yeah. I will yeah. do more than normal, but not. Shit, exactly what I knew would happen happened. People are just flooded everywhere as soon as they fucking could. And I was like, nope. I went to go shop. It was like in the morning, like I had been doing my like one, two week run, and then it was fucking slammed. I'm like, no, nah. fuck this. They have the, like the store set up to where it's like you can only go down a certain way in the aisle so you're not face to face with people. And motherfuckers were just like, nah, I'm just going to keep going this way because I'm cool. So, yep. God, you're, and, you know, no mask and going the wrong direction. It's just a man, fuck off. Why? Why can't you just? It's an easy, easy instructions to follow. Don't be a douchebag. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I got off 
uh, my day job at five yesterday and you know I had to go pick up my uh, whale kit at Marshall um, before they closed at six so I immediately jumped in the, the car uh, masked up and went to Marshall um, and it was funny because you know generally I'm coming the other way I'm coming from Tulsa to Owasso yeah. before all this started and this time I'm going the opposite direction so I'm, I wasn't in the traffic that was coming from from downtown towards you know north but it looked like a normal day. Yeah. Um, it, it looked like heavy ash traffic, like everything was back to normal. And that's the wrong call, in my opinion. Um, you know. I don't think anything's going to change it, though. It's, it's, these phases are going to hit their marks no matter fucking what happens. Uh, it's, I don't, I don't know. I would hope people would be smart about it at least if you're going to go do shit, but people aren't. People being douchebags and wiping snot on people and fucking shooting people. And it's just like, I can't put that mask on because God. It's just like, dude, <laughs> calm the fuck down. Just put the mask on. But people are going to people. Yep. Going to do. And, and that's it. Yeah. I'll, I, I'll just remove myself from the equation as much as I can. So. Um, but I, I may start doing some, some stuff, you know, I think yeah. we have had conversations with Tupps brewery down in, in Texas about making a trip down there for an in-person podcast in a closed tap room sometime in June, hopefully, um, you know, and we'll probably sit a little farther apart than we usually do and that kind of thing. Um, yeah. it'll mean, it, it, it'll mean you and I are in a vehicle together for, you know, whatever amount of hours and that some of that stuff, I guess I I'm starting to feel like, all right, like I don't want life to just get by me for a year or however long yeah, it's yeah. on. So I, yeah. I've kind of made peace with taking some degree of risk now, yeah. but yeah, you know, little stuff like that. I get, it's just, I don't want to be crammed in with hundred fucking people where right. I can't get away from you. <laughs> and and right. you're not, you're making, you're not making a point to help the situation, you know, you're right. all a shit. It's just like, so yep. Respect space. Be smart, but we're not smart as people. People just don't like being inconvenienced. I mean, that's yeah. what it comes down to. It's about how how they feel about it and what they don't want to have. They don't want to have to do something as simple as put on a mask or be mildly inconvenienced to slow this thing down. So they just uh, cry out that it's violating their rights or whatever and go about it. But. Uh, Fucking dumb, but on another note, yeah, weird, good, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, I don't know. I mean, going. Yeah, yeah. I finished my barbecue porter while we were having some technical difficulties there. So I've moved oh, on to Mosaic Pale Ale from Marshall. Right on. Did one throw up uh, Skydance? Did you see they're doing more shit on their YouTube channel? I did uh, not. Yeah, Jake's doing, I don't know if it's a weekly vlog or he's going to, Tim doing vlogs with Skydance and he showed like some of the brewing process and just talking about some of the beer and stuff. Pretty cool, cool video on their YouTube nice. channel. Definitely something I'd recommend everyone to go see. Pretty dope, especially yeah. with the brewery, you know, that they're building the new brewery or whatever. Get those updates and stuff. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's just Skydance brewing on YouTube or something like that. Yeah, subscribe to them and yeah. us. <laughs> right. And Core Forge got a channel too, I believe. Yep. Yeah, they did that. They showed that guy. Um, what was that? They had like a musician and a beer pairing or something for the episode. It was pretty pretty cool. I did see that um, Cross Cannons got got all their licenses and stuff the other day. So yeah, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. I want to see more of that, even if it's just in fucking pictures, like the little glimpses you get in the pictures that they post. Looks awesome. Yeah. Looks really fucking cool. The view of the campus that they showed, uh, just yeah. a glimpse of too, in one of their posts the other day. Holy shit. Yeah. You know, it's, I spent a year on that campus and it, it it's a pretty campus. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Fucking awesome. Well, I guess, should we, should we get into the reason that we're doing this episode? Yeah. Let's. Or another beer. What beer do I want? So, 
I guess, I guess the best way to intro this is just to say, you know, last year we, we went to our first, um, Crappers Association in Oklahoma puts on a summit each year. Uh, we went to our first one last year, last August at the Tower Theater there in Oklahoma City. We talked about it on the show at the time. It was awesome. Um, I would dare say that was probably my favorite beer experience last year, other than probably Hop Jam. That one's just always uh, – it's hard to top because it's yeah. – Weather's different. always nice and you just you just party, you know. Yep. Um, whereas the, the Crap Beer Summit's more – more low key you're listening to panels and like you're, I mean you're drinking but it's yeah you're not just partying um but I, I really enjoyed that and uh hearing everything everybody had to say the lady from Beerstadt and you know Eric Marshall and and Ross from Angry Scotsman that there were a ton of people there that really know their shit and were fun to listen to so with the world the way it is now um they moved that they basically flipped that with the festival that usually happens in Oklahoma city in May. The, uh, but they basically flipped it with the, the Oklahoma craft beer festival that usually happens in Oklahoma city the day before hop jam in May. Uh, so that'll be in August. This, this has moved up to May and it's going to be all online. So since they're not selling tickets uh, per se, they put a bunch of beer kits on sale that people could pick up uh, to benefit the CBAO. So um they had what they call beer nerd kits that were, you know, more entry level common beers that you could find most places. Um, and then they had, was it six different whale kits, yeah. uh, whale hunter kits. And if you don't know, a lot of people refer to uh, trying to track down rare beers, whale hunting. So that's where that comes from. Um, so they had six different kits with, it, it looks like it's probably at least a couple dozen. I didn't actually count them. Um, 24, 25 in most of them. Yeah. Uh, so that, that many different beers from different places. Michael and I each got a different kit. So thought we would go through what we got. Um, and any that we've already tried and what we're excited for. And then we'll talk a little bit about the panels and stuff that are coming up at that festival. That's uh, by the time you hear this, probably about a week away. Excited. Yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, I, <laughs> just to have something <laughs> to fucking do on a Friday night is going to be nice. <laughs> and, I, and I had seen, because um, there's other brewers associations that are doing a virtual summit, because there's people that have, I guess that I'm friends with that like like different ones in different states. Oh, okay. And this one seemed the coolest by far because of the beer. Like most of them, you were paying whatever to support the their brewers associations, but you were just, you know, in name so you were listed as a sponsor or something if you oh. bought the higher end ones um the lower one which is like a discount at you know, off beer or something this so I, I liked this setup quite a bit yeah this has been awesome i i texted you yesterday the second i got home and started cracking into mine because it was like yeah i'm not that excited on christmas i haven't been that excited to open anything on christmas uh like i was to open that box with this beer in it for mm, 20 years <laughs> maybe more yep it's just uh yeah it's wild it's, and especially because you know i mentioned it on the episode we do with amanda um i signed i signed up for it so early i wasn't even 100 percent sure what was in mine because some of the names were were listed as x's and they added some stuff later and so se several other things in there were total surprise to me which was awesome yeah Sorry. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> I'm not really sorry. Uh, I wasn't going to pick the same one as you anyway. And once I found out you got one during that thing, that's when I went ahead and bit the bullet. Cause I was waiting. I asked, <laughs> I sent them a message like, Hey, what are these, what does this mean? These, cause look at that X's or something. Yeah. And then, and they replied pretty quick. Uh, we, we fixed it now. Um, we've added beers and jumped on there and I'm like, well, well, that's awesome. A lot more beer. And then they have yeah. beers. So then my, the way I am, I'm getting on there every day. Like what beers have they added? What's going on? Did I get something different? Yeah. I can saw yours. I'm like, Oh yeah. For him. Yeah. I didn't look at mine after I bought it on purpose. Cause I was like, I'm just going to be surprised by anything I don't know about. Um, when I, when I get it. Yeah. No, I get it. Work, worked out. Um, yeah. I also hadn't had time to look at it. Honestly, I'm still working from home. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know. Do you, you want me to go first since I'm well hung your kit number one or? Yeah, sure. All right. So I'll just list, I'll just list what was in here first. We'll do it that way. So in whale hunter kit number one, and I should mention before I dive into this, uh, the beer nerd kits that have fewer beers in it and not as rare beers, but they have a lot of beer. Uh, those are still available. Just track down uh, the CBAO on Facebook, Crappers Association of Oklahoma. There's a link right there to, to buy tickets. Um, so inside whale hunter kit number one, I had uh, from Angry Scotsman Brewing in Oklahoma City, Munich, Hellas Lager, um, Anthem, Always in Session IPA, uh, Anthem, Rider, Dipa, Dipa, whatever we're going to call it, um, Boulevard, Love Child, number 10, which that's, uh, that's actually Heather's favorite sour, so that was awesome. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Yeah, that worked. That's that number specifically, or? Well, no, just that. That beer. series? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's going to be the only one I share. <laughs> <laughs> um from broke brewing uh which they you know they just opened at the end of february so i was excited to get some of their beer here in tulsa um with them being in oklahoma city uh their sterling stout coop ale works their oak age sour ale with mulberries which if i remember correctly is that the one that they had people picking flowers and bringing them to the brewery Oh, I forgot about that. That might have been. I think it is. Um, the one from Elk Valley that I had earlier on the show, uh, the Smoked Porter Ale, uh, Elk Valley's Imperial, uh, their, their Coffee Nemesis Imperial Stout. Uh, cucumber Size On, that one's gone. I already drank that. <laughs> Same. Uh, it's on my list, too. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, Elk Valley Wrinkled Lead, which is a Marzen. Uh, Heirloom Shadow Pilgrim. So that's an open fermented Belgian strong ale. 15.6%. Woo. <laughs> um, Iron Monks Mid South IPA. Jester King, which I I now can't look at Jester King and not think about Rapture. Right. <laughs> um, but Jester King's Das Wonder King. Uh, it's a naturally conditioned farmhouse ale. I probably said that wrong. Whatever. I've been drinking. I guess uh, I'm wrong on my list. <laughs> uh, from Lively Beer Works in Oklahoma City. I, I, I think I've only had their beer at TCBI last year. Um, it's a tart with passion fruit. Just a kettle sour with passion fruit. Um, is that Omnigang? Is that how you pronounce that? That's how I was going to try to say it. Okay, three philosophers, blueberry, it's quad. Uh, oh, blueberry coffee. That goes to the next line. God damn. Uh, good old Oscar Blues 1050. Who doesn't know about that one? And I'm excited about this one because uh, it's, it's a rare beer from Prairie. Uh, Prairie's Bourbon Paradise. So that's an imperial style with coconut and vanilla. Um. Just said their name a second ago. Rapture Chrome Yellow. Mixed Culture Saison. Um, Renaissance Gamma Ray IPA. And I, I enjoyed this for nostalgia reasons. Uh, Rogue. Rolling Thunder Imperial Stout. I didn't tell you last time I had a Rogue beer. It's been years. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is another one I've already already put down, and I think you did too. Uh, rough tail all together. It was my first one to drink. Yeah. <laughs> it was my first one, but you know, it didn't make it 24 hours. Um, I gotta say, I like that one way better than the Solera one. Really? Oh yeah. Good to know. It was good. Solera one was good, but yeah. I really, I dug that, that rough tail one. Quite and it's bit. supposed to be the same kind of deal as that, that campfire relief one a couple years ago. Yeah. They, was, right? Other so, half had a recipe and the other breweries just made it off of that recipe. Right on. That just has their little touches or whatever, but. I dug that rough tail one for sure. Yeah, it was, it was very good. I had that with, with dinner today, actually. Um, Sky Dance, Fancy Dance, New England IPA. Uh, this was another throwback for me. Santa Fe uh, Chicken Killer. It's a barley hey, wine. And do you, is that bottle just old as shit? Because it's a bottle for one. But then if you look on their 
untapped people have checked that in lately uh uh-huh. it's in cans it, but it probably like, is all the shit then but it there's no date on my bottle because yeah. i got one of those too and i was i uh i knew i'd had it before but it's been fucking years i think oh yeah yeah i mean it's probably been three four years for me for sure yeah uh i had i have that stone cloud one that you had earlier on the show the the purple druplet we're going with that and then uh i posted this in our instagram stories yesterday so this one was actually the top one on my box when I opened it up and I about shit my pants because I did not know it was going to be in there. Uh, Vortex Alley uh, out of Punk City. Um, so the, the, the list I'm looking at here just says assorted crowler. <laughs> I crack it open and it's Vortex, uh, their, their coffee stout jitter juice, um, which is fucking delicious and all also happens to be as far as I know, the first beer that we ever had from them a couple of years ago at uh, wild brew. So yeah. real Love fucking that. excited for that. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Congrats yeah. on getting that one. If fucking rapture, the Peter beer would have run up in your kit too. I might have like pulled what hair out I have. Cause that, that popped up in like kit number two, I think. Oh, did it? And that one's not even out yet anywhere. Yeah. Man, we've already had it like a month ago. It's fine. Yeah. I guess I'll mention beer. though, since you mentioned that beer, I, was, I should mention this real quick. Uh, I did a delivery from him from Rapture uh, last week. Mm-hmm. And when he dropped my beer off, he mentioned that uh, he'd get in touch with us soon, but he's going to, he's going to announce a release for that at the farm awesome. soon. So we'll have more details on that when we get them. Awesome. Go through my list. What we're doing now? Fuck yeah, we are. Okay, so mine was Well Hunter Kit number three. Uh, First one here is probably one of the main ones reasons I picked this one. It's four or five brewings free oil. We talked about it a little bit with one, probably one on the show with Amanda because she was drinking the four or five barley wine. Yeah, and this is the one that's the mixture of the four or five and the their barley wine. Got it here. I just didn't open it because I didn't know if I want to drink a 12% beer. Um, so probably be staying closed. Uh, but can't wait to try that one. Um, then it's Angry Scotsman, their gateway to Hellas. Um, this one, I haven't had any of their beer before. Beaver's Bend um, out of Broken Bow. Their, I don't even know that word, Red Sloth? Red Slow? I don't know that so- word. You're going to have to report back on that one. And if we need to keep it off the show, that's fine because I, I have here to fill the bottle, but I ain't trying it on the show. <laughs> I, say, like, I don't want to shit on anybody on the show, but I have yeah. not heard good things about their beer. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of, I got picked this. This is another reason I picked this kit too, because I wanted to, I wanted to try it myself, see what it is. Uh, Interesting okay. bottle, big ass yeah. bottle, blend of brown and red ale, it says. But yeah. Uh, I'm going to have two from Boulevard. First, they're Changeling, which I'm actually drinking right now. Okay. They're Dark Sour L. Pretty fucking good. Yeah. Um, and then on mine, I had Love Child number nine. Nice. Um, haven't tried that one yet. I hadn't tried any other sours before I drank this one, I don't think, just because when I was drinking Boulevard, I damn sure wasn't drinking sours. Yeah. Uh, what in my cup of tea or beer? Uh, next was Broke Brewing. Same as you, Sterling Stout. Oh, yeah. I don't think that was one of the ones we tried when we were down there. They uh-huh. sound familiar. Uh-huh. Uh, then Coop L Works, a couple from them. They're in number 10, which is the Oak Age Sour with mulberries, and they're number 11, which is a Berliner style vice with cherries. Okay. Uh, then I had a couple from Dogfish Head. Um, first, their 120 minute IPA. Okay. 18 fucking percent. Uh, ABV. That one, I think I might try to age. I've seen that in a lot of beer groups over the past couple of years where people, they say you should age that one for like, you can age it for years and it just gets really? better. Yeah. And it even says it on the bottle to age. Okay. And it's so, an IPA. And it's an IPA. Yeah. So I'm intrigued by that. It's, I actually have it in the closet because I'm, I put it in the closet with uh, Prairie's Bourbon Paradise just to let them age a little bit. Um, but I mean, I'm really intrigued by that 120 minute IPA. I've never pulled the trigger and bought it anywhere. Um, so it was cool to see it in this box. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, there's also one from them. It's a Belgian strong with brown sugar. Raison d'Extra. That's probably not how you say that, <laughs> but it's a 16, that one. Yeah. Is it good? Six, is it good? I, I enjoyed it, yeah. 16.5%. No. Damn. Uh, and Elk Valley's Cucumber Saison. I said that's gone. Uh, Heirloom, Rustic Ales, their Shadow Pilgrim. I didn't realize that that was the one that was in the box. Um, but yeah, 15.6. A uh, couple from Iron Monk. They're Mid-South and the Imperial Stout. Uh, Lively, same beer. Tart with passion fruit. I think that's what you said yours was. Yeah. Um, the Oma Gang beer. Three Philosophers Blueberry Coffee. I actually poured that one before. I started drinking the Boulevard. And not what I was wanting to drink tonight. So <laughs> I moved on to Boulevard. Okay. Um, it smells fucking, smells good. It's just, I don't know. Not what I was expecting. Um. Oscar Blues 1050, Prairie Bourbon Paradise, Renaissance Gamma Ray. Uh, well, I think we're just hitting a bunch of the same ones. Rough Tail Altogether, Santa Fe Chicken Killer, Sky Dance Fancy Dance, Stone Cloud Purple Druplet. And then I don't know how to say this brewery. Unibrow? <laughs> Unibrow? Uh, yes, we're going to go with that. <laughs> I like that better. Um, their first one, it's the Blanche de Chambly. Why do they got to be fancy? Hold the, hold the thing from- up where people can see the spelling. There you go. <laughs> it's a Canadian brewery because I had to look it up. So I'm like, why are these? Why is it like this? Can't you say it's <laughs> normal? But 5%, and then their Trois Pistoles, which is <laughs> that. Nage Trois Pistoles. <laughs> Um, so yeah, a lot of good shit on there. A lot of high point stuff, a lot of sours on my list. Yeah. Um, Did you do that deliberately? Did you get them on the sours? No. You've been into that lately? No, I wasn't. No, like literally the ones that sold it for me were the 405, um, the beavers bin because I hadn't, hadn't tried it. There were some that had multiple beavers bins and I didn't, yeah, I didn't want too many from the same brewery. I know I wound up with two iron mugs on here. Um, I have four Elk Valleys, but man, I'm I'm okay with that. Yeah, this, yeah, those ones you got. Um, but yeah, the 405, the Beaver's Bend, just because I hadn't had it yet before. Um, but I was curious about those Dogfish Head beers. A lot of the other ones I've had before, um, but then broke, of course, getting to try something else from yep. them because I don't know when the fuck <laughs> another time you know when I'll be down there again to their brewery. Right. Um, but. Good stuff, though. Man. Good list. It was awesome to see them sell out of those fucking kits. I know. That's a that's fucking insane. I think there were people that were buying, you know, multiple kits, and and I I know of a couple people that bought, you know, two or three kits, and it's like fuck. Number one, balling. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I get it because if money weren't an object, I'd buy one of all six. Right. <laughs> Yeah. It's an awesome idea, and I hope they. I hope they. They don't necessarily have to do a virtual festival every year. Things get back to normal with the COVID nonsense, but um, I think they should do something like this every year and just sell beer kits to benefit CBAO. Why the fuck not use that to raise yeah. some money? Yeah, you go down there for the summit, take your fucking beer home, your beer cases home. That'd be fucking legit. Well, or even just pick up, pick up too would be awesome. Yeah, or even just don't even do it associated with the summit. Just do it once or twice a year just to raise money. Sure. People do it. Clearly, people would do it. Yep. The people that yep. were in the line with me, there weren't a lot, but the guy that was in front of me, um, he was like, it's really awesome that they did stuff like this. Like, yeah. Pretty legit. Hope you don't want to talk more. Right. <laughs> Did you have a mask? Close. Some people when I start talking, they start inching a little too close. And I'm just like, mm, nope. Yeah. Already felt weird with the fucking mask on. I gotta say, carrying that fuck, I parked a little too far away. Just carrying that fucking <laughs> those beers <laughs> with that fucking mask on. I'm like, damn, I ain't had an asthma attack in a while. But I'm about to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I didn't see it. Well, and I I posted it on Instagram a few weeks ago, but my my mask is made of an old pub talk shirt, so it's pretty thick. Yeah. Fuck, man. Yeah, I did the same shit. I parked a little too far away, and I was like, uh, 
I mean, I'm out of shape, but goddamn, I'm not this out of shape. This <laughs> man is fucking me up <laughs> carrying this heavy beer. Yeah. But no, pretty fucking awesome. This yeah. is definitely whoever came up with this idea for them, fucking kudos. I know maybe it's not like I was complaining about beer being added later or whatever, but I get it. He's throwing all this shit together. It's, yeah. it's fucking shit. It's awesome. I get it. I'm just a jealous person. <laughs> um, hold up that glass. Do you still have that with you? Cause I didn't bring mine in here. Uh, Cause that was, that was a nice surprise. Nice surprise as fuck. Saw it like sitting on the counter, I think. And I'm like, are there glasses? No, yeah. somebody was checking their box or no, Kyle was giving somebody, I don't know what it was, but I'm like, holy shit, a glass. So yeah. That's yeah. Uh, and then, sponsor here yeah yeah so that was awesome i wasn't expecting that i don't think it was listed in the um description of what all you mm -hmm. got so that was cool so so i guess let, let's talk a little bit about what they've got going on for this festival so uh it's a uh, it's hashtag prost in place friday may 15th from 7 to 10 on uh, the cbao's facebook page or uh, at craft brewers okay so, um, so kicking off at 7 p.m. is the English Brewing Panel. So uh, I'm not going to try to pronounce all these people's names. I'm going to tell you what brewery they're from instead. Um, so we've got the, the owner brewer from Machine House Brewing, uh, the owner brewer from Forest, Maine, uh, from Ivory Bill Brewing, and from Hogshead Brewing. Uh, they're going to be doing the English Brewing Panel. That Hogshead one, every time I see that name, I just think about our interview with Eric yep. Marshall. Yep. So I'm intrigued by that one. For um, sure. The next one up is East Coast All-Stars. Uh, it has Rheingeist Brewery, which is intriguing to me because I, I want to go to that brewery in Cincinnati. The, the beer they post on social media, on Facebook and stuff, looks fucking delicious. And I, I look forward to that one. Um, then I guess Monday Night Brewing and Wormtown Brewery. I don't okay. know that. Yeah, I'm not familiar with those either. Although, for some reason, the name Jeff Heck for Monday night sounds familiar to me. Um, so then at 8 p.m. is the Future of Craft Beer uh, panel. So that's uh, got the founder of uh, E3 Craft Strategies, um, editor of Brewbound, the, uh, this is cool, uh, the co-founder and president of Left Hand Brewing. So that's awesome. Um, and then the, uh, the chief economist of the Brewers Association. Uh, next up, we have the Saison Hall panel. <laughs> look forward to that one. Um, we have the owner brewer from Yoke Fellow Beer, a uh, brewer from Oxbow Brewing Company. And then we have somebody from Wood Cellar and Mixed at Creature Comforts. I don't know what that is. <laughs> and then a blender at the Vell Brewing Company. All right. For those mixed culture <laughs> saisons, no doubt. Saison, whatever. Oh. Uh, <laughs> 9 p.m. brings the lager brewing panel. Uh, so we've got the, the head brewer at Heater Allen Brewing, uh, the brewmaster at Wayfinder Brewing, brewer at, uh, I'm going to fuck this name up. We probably should just put the, the list up in between our faces on the video. Um, but it's a Zillakosh, something like that. Um, and then the owner brewer at Notch Brewing. And then at 9.30, we'll wrap it up, and everybody will probably be slightly inebriated by this point to Why enjoy the, <laughs> the West Coast All-Stars panel. Um, you've got the founder for Maui Brewing, co-founder of Ska Brewing, and the owner of Oloma Brewing Company. Right on. Are there any? Are they? Are there any of these that really stand out to you? Um, like I said, the East Coast All Stars, because I'm curious to hear the dude from Ryan Geist, um, the Saison panel. Uh, those two for sure in the future of craft beer. Um, yeah. You? Yeah, yeah I think I'm, I. Well, it's it's like boobies. I I kind of like them all, right. but right. I. <laughs> I, as far as people, Stephen Kirby from Hogshead, like you said, because of that interview we did with Eric a couple of years ago, um, yeah. left hand brewing Eric Wallace, because that's just where my 
some of my early craft experiences were it was left hand beer. Um, I, I've always been intrigued by Maui brewing. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I just kind of, kind of like them all. And if I've learned one thing from beer events, uh, these will definitely, none of these will run long and there's no oh, yeah. chance that any of these times are inaccurate. Oh no. You should definitely not stay tuned past 10 o'clock. It won't go past that. <laughs> That's why our podcasts on time limits, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is all awesome. Yeah. So I imagine our probably our next episode, or if not our next one, then probably within the next two episodes, we'll end up talking more about this after it's happened. Yeah. And the results of the beers we try, because there are quite a few I'm looking forward to. Yeah. Yeah, what... Well, I guess we kind of talked about this as we yeah. were doing it, but uh, as far as what you haven't already had, which which one beer off of your your kid are you most looking forward to putting in your mouth? This one. Okay. Easily. Because a lot of the other ones I've already had, or right. It'd be between that and the Beaver's Bend, just because I haven't had that, and it's a local, you know, it's an Oklahoma beer. But I have a feeling I know which one I'm gonna like better. So yeah. I'm looking for <laughs> I've got a suspicion that you're probably correct. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just, just maybe. What about you? Your, your one. Well, mine was the, the barbecue porter, which I've already drank, but uh, of what's left, it's probably the stone cloud, the purple uh, driplet or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't get me wrong. There's, there's several of these I'm very excited for, but oh, yeah. It's kind of the same thing. It's like a lot of them I've had before. Some of them, um, because of ABV, I'm maybe a little hesitant to crack open right away. But <laughs> um, yeah, I, it's fucking cool. I, thanks to the CBAO for doing this and making it fucking easy, honestly. Yep, for sure. Can't wait to get my shirt, but I don't know. I think they're shipping those or something. Yeah, I think so. It seemed like those weren't selling very well. But whatever. Go buy a shirt, people. God willing, it'll be the only one of these that's done in quarantine. So, right. Be a collector's item and whatnot. Okay. So, as we've done, I think, on almost all of these quarantine episodes, it's time to do a quarantine beer chug. And I'm standing up now. <laughs> yeah. I almost did it too, just because, like, you know, it's that thing where when you see someone standing, you feel like you're supposed to stand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then I remembered I don't have real pants on. I have gym shorts <laughs> on, so let me not do that. <laughs> what are you chugging? Uh, so I am going to chug an easy drinker from American Solera. Uh, it's the Soleric, Solera can. Uh, it's a wheat ale with uh, coriander and orange peel. I've had quite a few of these. Um, the last couple of weeks, my last. Oh, that one coming tomorrow. Yeah, it's I'm gonna try it. Again. It's good shit, and uh, yeah, I had a bunch of them. So sweet. I have Gateway to Hellas from Angry Scotsman. I think yeah, out of the Well Hunter kit. Oh, nice. I'm a little scared now. I had that barbecue porter. Everything's sitting real heavy on me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well. oh, I need to repeat of last week where I failed. What? Uh, wait, wait, what? Oh yeah. Oh, it's like it went all over me last week. It just yeah. straight busted on you. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, I basically <laughs> stone cold Steve Austin to that. Beer. <laughs> oh man, good times. I choose to look at it that way instead of just it being an epic fail. <laughs> uh, all right. Cheers, yeah, my cheers. Friend. Oh, damn it. I got on my shirt again. Damn it. Uh, that'll go for this week. Jeremy, close this motherfucker down. Hey, guys, uh, don't let the door hit in the vagina on the way out. <laughs> that was hilarious. That's going to do it for this week's episode. 
Make sure to uh, check us out on the web, pubtalkpodcast.com. Follow us on all of the social media at Pub Talk Podcast. Hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. Um, go get, go get a, a kit if you haven't done so on the Crap Brewers Association of Oklahoma's uh, website, their Facebook page, whatnot. Um, and, you know, check out the, check out the event next week. Uh, as always, never forget there's nothing in life too big or hard. You can't handle it over a few beers with your good friends. Until next time. Chill till the next episode. Bye. Bye. Wash your fucking hands. <laughs>